Diary, <clears throat> hello, it, it is February 2024. This is a slightly apologetic, but very honest uh, unboxing and information about the Raspberry Pi 5. So uh, in our home in the UK, we use a lot of Raspberry Pis. They are small computers that can do stuff. So as an example, I have uh, one Raspberry Pi which partly manages the smart home. It runs something called Demotic. It runs uh, an, what's called an MQ series server. And it's also the repository of some data information for our weather station. Um, we tend to use multiple Raspberry Pis. And the Raspberry Pi 5 is the latest in the iteration of Raspberry Pis, which date back obviously from Raspberry Pi nothing to Raspberry Pi 4 and 5 it being the latest release. Now the Raspberry Pi 5, <clears throat> just to give you an idea of pricing, is about £60 from the Pi Hut, which I regard as probably the premier store in the UK to buy a Raspberry Pi from. So when you've added in postage, you're probably talking about just over £60 to buy a Raspberry Pi 5. Um, it's an ideal small computer, and despite the fact there are many other cloned computers in the similar form factor, I'm going to argue that you go for Raspberry Pi and not the clones. So, <clears throat> what have we got in front of me? Well, we've got the Pi 5 itself, which is here, which is available in 4 and 8 gigabyte uh, form factors. We've got the fan, the cooling fan, which would sit on top of the Pi to cool it down. And we've got a beautiful aluminium case. So we're going to unbox the uh, three, sorry, the two components and explain what's next. Okay, so let's start with Mr. Pi. So it's a very, very small box. Let me put a mouse by the side of it so you can see how small the actual um, Pi box is without even getting it out of the box. Uh, there's an open here tab. Now, the shame of the situation is that these items have been sitting in the house for over two months. So in other words, since the end of 2023. And the reason is I've been busy. <laughs> so despite <clears throat> really wanting a Raspberry Pi, and I'm kind of coming on to that, um, which are now freely available, um, and being desperate to get one, and being one of the first people to order them, and having this arrive, these two components arrive, having arrived, and I've actually got it out of the box. So that's the actual pie. Here was the box. Here's the pie. It's much like the 4B. It looks slightly more elegant than the 4B. And um, as usual, and much to my annoyance in a way, you've got the USB-C uh, port here from which you can power the device. And you've got two ports here, which are display ports, effectively. I say annoyingly because these take this... Uh, mini HDMI connector, and to my mind, this is an absolute menace. I would have been far happier if, as with the old designs, this had been a full-size HDMI connector, because these connectors are very fragile and tend to break off. So, um, we run our Pies headless, meaning there is no screen attached, but even in the setup process, when I'm connecting a cable to this device, it is a bit dodgy, shall we say. So there's the power adapter. Um, you've of course got a micro SD card reader here, but I never use that now because what I do instead is I insert a USB key here and the operating system is installed to the USB key because, ironically, this SD card reader is not as fast as running the operating system from, an, from a USB key. So, my, so one of many tips is don't run the operating system from, from here, run it from here. Uh, this model's got, of course, USB 3.0 interfaces. It's got full Ethernet, and it's for hobbyists, uh, people who want to control stuff, it's got this GPIO bus. For more than two years, or almost two years, I could say, the Raspberry Pi was not available, and this is because what's known as scalpers were sitting on the Raspberry Pi purchasing websites buying all the units up and then trying to resell them at a higher price. So literally, although this device or the Raspberry Pi 4 comes in at about £40 minimum, you couldn't get one for two years and literally couldn't get one. You could get one on, on Amazon for over £100, but you couldn't get a Raspberry Pi 4B, which is the previous best Raspberry Pi, uh, except for over £100. Sites like Farnell, sites like Pi Hut were completely sold out 
And these people called scalpers were just taking all the supply that was available and trying to resell it. And it was a completely despicable situation. And I mention this because when Raspberry Pi 5 was announced, I immediately put myself down for a pre-order at the Pi Hut and was told I'd get one. And at the time, and it's very significant, there was no case available. So my rationale is the following. I was go what I was going to do was test out the Pi 5 with this cooler. Um, and then I was going to, when this case was, it was announced, but not shipping, I was going to wait until this case was available, integrate the two components and then use the Raspberry Pi 5 at home as I would normally do the Raspberry Pi 4B. Now, here is the thing, and this is my contention. So we're going to do the, we're going to do the unboxing of the, um, of the case next. So the Flerk case is a beautiful aluminium case. It's quite expensive. You can go to the Pi Hut and see what the prices are. But, and again, I've not unboxed this at all. This is completely new. Shameful it's been sitting around for two months, but I have been busy, as other YouTubes will point out on the channel. Here is the thing. The thing is, this is a beautiful case. It's made from aluminium, and here is a aluminium point that contacts with the uh, heat sink here. There's usually a, a pad, there's a thermal pad here to contact these two points. So with this case and this design here, I can some, I shall assemble it later, you will get a beautiful looking, completely silent, pretty fast, small computer. This isn't suitable for projects that need to use these GPIO pins, but for projects that don't use the GPIO pins, this is a fantastic solution. So I would say, if you want to experiment with Raspberry Pi and you have the money, you need to buy a system with a case because if you make a small project and have it go into production, shall we say, what you don't want is this thing to be lying around where, well, in our case, the cat may turn on it or your small child may grab it and say, oh, this looks nice, uh, uh, mummy, daddy, and then break it. You need it to be in a case. And this is a solid state design, which is totally silent because it's fanless. So I wouldn't need this fan, which I only bought because this case was not available. So my sincere recommendation is go with, with the Raspberry Pi 5 and the Flirt case. If you want to save money, you would go with the Raspberry Pi 4B and a Flirt case. These cases are not interchangeable. You need to buy the right case for the right Raspberry Pi. So if you go for the 5, which is let's say 60 pounds, and you spend about 20 quid on this case, you're up to about 80 pounds plus postage. Or if you want to do things more cheaply to, set, to start off, you choose a 4B. Now, why choose a Raspberry Pi amongst the plethora of other devices that are out there? And the reason is support. So other, other, other single board computers of this size, and they've, a lot of them have standardized on the Raspberry Pi form factor, are available and are available for smaller amounts of money. Not significantly, so this is £60. You might find a competitor available for £40 or £30, maybe. But the thing is that if you have a problem with your operating system or with a project, you can Google, or other search engines are available, the, the, the situation and hopefully get a resolution. And that is the main advantage of using a Pi. So I'm going to do a bit of assembly and possibly a bit of installation and uh, we'll see how we go. Um, so would you believe it? It's not quite as straightforward as I was, I was imagining. So I thought I'd make a, a little ditty to say that there's an extra bit here and I've noticed it said something on the case about um, integrated power button. So that's all new. This was a passive case before. There was no sort of power button. There's a, a gizmo here that interfaces, I believe, with this point here. Like so, it can only go one way because there's a fat bit there and a point there, and there's a fat bit there and a point there. So this goes in here like voila, and that sits like that. And then uh, you need to put the heat sink doodah, voila, and then it's kind of obvious that you need to put it the right way around. 
You've got the power switch and the heat pad. That should just flop down there. Then this case goes on. So the SD card is on this side. So this is the SD card entrance point, which we should not be using because it's too slow. And then we're just gonna use a watchmaker's toolkit with Phillips screws. So stage two, we have successfully used Bellino Etcher to write the latest Pi 5 image to this uh, USB key, which is 128 gigabytes fast USB 3.2 style key. We're using a Microsoft keyboard, which I use for all my testing. This happens to be a US keyboard um, with a single dongle here which is both the keyboard and the mouse, so that's advantageous. I've got an ethernet wire to plug into the ethernet socket. I've got a power wire, and I've got a dedicated cable, which attaches to our telly, which is here. Um, and you'll see that this is a dedicated cable without a converter plug. I've been reading, through trial and error and annoyance, I've used a regular USB cable, HDMI cable with a converter, and that keeps breaking. So I've, I splashed out and bought a dedicated cable, which I now use for all my US um, Raspberry Pi setups. So let's continue. Okay, I appear to have got an error about the fact that the power supply is not good enough. So I shall be connecting a dedicated laptop power adapter here and not using the wall socket. With the wall socket does uh, five volts, two amps. Apparently that's not good enough. Okay, it said it wouldn't boot on the USB key because there was not a five volt, five amp power supply. I've disconnected the USB-C extension cable and now I've got a laptop power adapter which can push out a lot of amps with a Thunderbolt cable going into the power socket, still not working. So, uh, let me see if I can press this button again and see if it can boot from the uh, aforementioned power supply. Okay, so I've pressed the power button once. <clears throat> it's going to boot. Uh, obviously, it's in such small, tiny writing on a 4K screen that uh, I'll put my glasses on. United Kingdom, actually, it's United Kingdom, but the language is. Uh... Well, well, we'll leave it as British English, shall we? Use the US keyboard. Okay. Select wireless network. We don't want because we have got a Ethernet network. We'll use uh, both Chrome and Firefox. Great. We'll say Firefox for now. Checking for software updates. So diary, my summary points are <clears throat> that it's a totally shameful situation that it's taken me two months to unpack the Raspberry Pi, but it is unpacked and I have built a wonderful new uh, WordPress server using the Raspberry Pi 5 and the beautiful Flirk case. I still recommend the Raspberry 5 or Raspberry Pi platform instead of any other competitive platform really because so many other people are using it. And so if you have any kind of problems, you're likely to find a solution more easily than on a competitive platform. And really the other platforms are only slightly cheaper. Uh, and the Pi 5 
or Pi 4b provides an exceptionally powerful base. Um, I always recommend that flirt case because it's a passive case. You can get fancier cases that, for example, include an NVMe slot for Pi 5 and perhaps change those irritatingly small uh, <clears throat> mini HDMI connectors into something more practical. They sort of miss the point because you start to spend a lot more on a case and then a lot more on a power supply. And before you know it, your four gigabyte, 60 pound Pi 5 has, has had significant extra costs added. Uh, so I'm trying to keep this down to a, a reasonably cheap build. We have multiple Pis in the house, uh, let's say up to say 10 of them, and we keep them up to date. Uh, and they are centrally power supplied, which brings me on to my last point about power supply. I think the Pi 5 wants you to have a 5 volt, 5 amp power supply. Again, that's very expensive. Um, and if your Pi is likely loaded, then you can, quote, get away with a lower amperage power supply. And you have to put uh, um, something in the, in the, in the boot to config.txt file. And all that will be put into the, into the WordPress article that I shall be writing up. So yes, it's Pi 5 and Flirt for me, and I think it's a superb combination. And uh, I've even bought my second one as we speak. Thanks for watching. Installing updates.